level one, yeah. David, you ready over there? Yeah. On the phone, too? Yeah. Hold on one second. As we prepare to suck up every bit of bandwidth. Yep. And Hopefully no that. one has anything yeah. else to do anywhere. Live? Live on YouTube? We're live! Hello, YouTube. Three, two, one. What is that? Yikes. There. Once Hello, up. we're back. Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, another episode of the Horological Happy Hour at European Watch Company. I'm Justin, this is Rob, he's busy fiddling with something right now. Um, bear with us for one second while we get everything uh, you know, up, rolling, and ready to go. And you may have noticed earlier, but uh, we decided this week to do things a little bit different. We're going to talk about all chronographs this week. That's right. We've got a fantastic tray. Echo. There we go. There we go. And down. There we We've go. got a great tray of chronos here. We've spanned the gamut from every brand and I think almost every price point as well. Yeah, a little bit of everything here. Uh, before we get into it, if you guys, uh, if there are any chronos that you guys do want us to pull out of the safe, stuff that is on our website that we might not have out on the tray right now, uh, shoot us a message in the chat, either on Instagram or YouTube, and we'll, we will happily pull that out and, and chat about that as well. So, sorry for the, uh, the little technical difficulty, we're just uh, making sure everything is set, and you guys can see it with our second camera, but we are, uh, we're getting into yeah. it. Again, we are working with two two cameras and two phones to try and get onto both services at the same time. Cool. Instagram, let us know if you can see that, and we have our second camera for YouTube ready to go. So, first off, Cheers, my friend. here's to happy hour. We made it. We are drinking a rye that was distilled here in New England in New Hampshire. This is from the Cathedral Ledge Distillery in North Conway, New Hampshire. As always, we are open to sponsorship. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Hopefully you guys are joining us at home. Um, one quick thing. Well, that's not bad. Um, he rock uh, or high rack on the on Instagram comments. If we have time at the end, we'll absolutely pull that pebble out because that's we talked about it a little bit last week, but it's by far one of my favorite pieces we've ever had. So if we have time, we'll absolutely pull that out again to, to show it off a little bit more. Yeah, so, that's a special watch. Do we have a second camera good, good to go? That All right, cool. Good. So I think we're good. We're going to kick things off on a, on probably, well, I don't know, one of the highest of high notes. Hold uh, on, hold on. You get ahead of yourself. Okay. What is a chronograph? I don't know, Robert. Tell the people what a chronograph is. So chronographs. Chronograph is adding the complication of a stopwatch to your wristwatch. So if you think about like a handheld stopwatch like they used to use in the Olympics back in the day, that would just be a stopwatch with a start, a stop, and a reset. What the chronograph wristwatch allows you to do is keep your timekeeping going while having a second kind of gear train mechanism that will engage an independent stopwatch. Some of these, is that one doing it? Yep. Sorry. That keep, was keep, it. Keep talking, buddy. No, see, there's still something okay, over there. It's okay. Just keep talking. Phantom echoes. Don't worry. We, um, so this allows you to keep the timekeeping going, but then it also adds the feature of being able to time an event. And we have everything from 30-minute uh, counters mm -hmm. to 12-hour counters here. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have anything that goes beyond that. We even have a nice split on here that we'll get around to. Yes, we do. But, so... No, without any further ado, let's oh, jump yeah. right in. Um, we are going to start off with the Longa Datagraph Yellow Jacket. So you may be familiar with the Datagraph. Um, this is probably the rarest variant with its, you know, unofficially, there's roughly 30 um, that are known to exist. So it's a little bit of a funky kind of wrinkle in Longa's history where I believe it was 07. Um, it was produced from 07 to 09. It was never included in any um, Longa catalogs, Which is any, wild. any price lists, and apparently, you know, the watch was produced almost as a test, um, and at the Geneva show in, I think it was either 07 or 08, empl Longa employees were wearing the watch at, the, at their booth, kind of trying to gauge public reaction, and apparently it wasn't all that successful because they, they only made, a, like I said, 30 pieces over the course of two years. So, you know, classic datagraph, yellow gold case, though, um, 
with that, you know, with the standard black dial and white sub dial. So just super, super interesting, rare variant of the data. How could people not like this? I know. Stuff? I don't understand that. I mean, I think yellow gold is is an amazing thing right now. I think it's kind of making a bit of a comeback because for a while there, yellow gold was always the cheapest variant of yep. any watch, be it a Patek, a Longa, an mm -hmm. AP, whatever. And I think now, especially with like the reintroduction of like uh, the 16202 mm -hmm. in a yellow gold yep. um, case and seeing more yellow gold kind of prevalent, I think we're just going to keep seeing that get better and better and better. Agreed. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, I mean, how could you not like that? It's it's interesting, too, because you have the yellow jacket, which is, you know, like we said, kind of this mythical beast that is, is fairly unknown. Yeah. But then you have the Duforograph, the rose gold version, and that... I almost feel like has gotten more hype than, than mm. the Yellow Jacket has ever gotten. It's more well known, you know, obviously because it was spotted on the on the wrist of you know Mr. Philippe Dufour himself, you know. So it's it, it has a little bit more cachet, I would oh, say. Oh yeah. But thirty pieces, thirty, 30 pieces. pieces, and the whole like out of the catalog, out of the price list. Mm -hmm. To me, that's such a cool thing. And also, it's worth talking about since we're doing a chronograph show. It's worth talking about the data graph and mm -hmm. the data graph's place in the horological timeline. Because before this watch came out, really nobody did an in-house manually wound chronograph. Well, not everybody. Not, not almost. No one did. This was. This was really the moment, you know, Longa kind of kicked the rest of the, the industry kind of, you know, squarely in the pants and got them, you know, to move back towards producing, you know, in-house calibers. It's kind of, you know, become, you know, uh, just expected at this point that a manufacturer, you know, of Longa's caliber or Paddock or whatever it might be is using in-house calibers. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, even Paddock at the time, you know, clearly they were using Lamania based stuff. They were using Lamania-based, as was Vacheron. Exactly. Um, and, you know, there, there are arguments, you know, both pro and con when it comes to how important is, you know, having an in-house movement. But, like you're saying, at the time, no one was doing it. And Longa said, you know, they made a point that we are going to develop this completely in-house. This is going to be... Right. All you know, all all us basically. Well, it also it allowed them to incorporate that signature big date, mm -hmm. you know, which is such a longer thing. Um, it, I mean, you obviously just show. I think you showed off the the movement. It's the architecture's like it's, nothing else. We like, say, nothing. We else. say it all the time, and I I feel like we just we're like broken records repeating ourselves. But like, it's one of the most beautiful movements you'll ever see. There's so much depth. There's just yeah. so much just incredible inc intricate beauty and details in there. It's just it's it's really really special. Yeah, it's probably one of the nicest movements like in terms of like actually warranting a display back mm -hmm. there's there's not many that go above that no i a yeah. 100% completely agree with you absolutely stunning piece this one will be coming to our website um, in the near future. We just photographed it today, and actually, even even more special. So this is this one comes with an original box, original papers, but we also have uh, original yellow gold Wellendorf bracelet um, to go with it as well. So keep an eye on our website for that one. This is going to be a really really special one that you're going to want to check out. What is the price of the yellow jacket? That's a very good question. That is coming soon. <laughs> um, we literally, like, just took this thing in. Um, and that's kind of the cool thing about this show, is it gives us a chance to show you guys things that, that we're getting to see that aren't live yet, but that are coming soon. So this is kind of a sneak peek for those of you who are interested in seeing what's coming down the pipeline. So we've kind of started at the top. Yep. I think now... We should pop down a little bit okay. and take a look at. Trade off for this guy. Yeah. Want to go totally opposite end of the spectrum. I like here? that. Okay. I'm I'm in for that. Is this steel or titanium? That's steel. This is, this is steel. Yep. So, another famous chronograph, in my opinion. And when yeah. we were talking about this list, you know, we were looking at different brands, and obviously a data graph came to mind very quickly, mm -hmm. um, because of the fact that it is this archetypal chronograph yes. within within the luxury watch world. So then the next one that I immediately thought of was the IWC Pilots Chrono. Yep. Because if you think about IWC, you think about the Portuguese and you think about I think about the big pilot, the pilot chrono. Or the pilot pilot style pieces, yes. Oh for me it's pilot chrono. Really? I actually go right for I think it's the three seven one seven or something, like the one from a couple years ago. Okay. Um, and I actually I really like the ceramic top gun stuff. I, I don't know why. I'm like always drawn to those watches. I always think they're very cool. So 
what we have here is a Spitfire, right? So this is the IW387903. It's the classic Pilot Chrono. Um, you know, 41 millimeter stainless steel case. You have that day and date uh, apertures, you know, at three o'clock, and then that vintage toned loom. So it's yeah. it's really, for me personally, standard pilot shape hands. Exactly. You know, the, those really big, super legible dial. You know, super. You know, um, you know the, the the really beefy hands. And I think I just said it, but it has that vintage toned loom. So for me, this one, it's kind of like a, a mix of the best of both worlds here, where you get you know that that vintage kind of look but with that, you know, completely modern setup. Um, and it just, it's, you're right, Rob. This is, this is, you know, very, like, distinctively IWC. For me, like I said, it's this and the big pilot are the two that yeah. immediately come to mind to me for me when I think of, of, of IWC. Make the hands pretty. There you go. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, they, they built half the brand on this watch, in my opinion. Maybe not this Spitfire in general, but, like, that's a handsome watch. It is. Nice calfskin strap with the contrast stitching on it. Um, I love the fact that I think to this day they still don't loom the numbers on these. Right. You only get loom at the quarter hours yep. there and on the hands, which, I don't know, it's one of those like quirky things that to me just still feels really good. Well, so good. It's, again, it's, it's, it's all based on that, that pilot, her you know, that, that, that aviation history, you know, yeah. that, that heritage there where... You know, pilots needed to be able to, you know, the loom needed to be strong enough for them to, 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 to you know, discern what time it was in, in basically total blackout, but it couldn't be so bright that it would interfere with their, uh, their instruments and whatnot. So it's, it, you know, it makes no sense, whatever, but it, like now, but it's super cool. It's just an interesting little detail yeah. that, you know, I love that IWC has held that Great over, you know, literally up until the, the present day. So yeah, just incredible piece. It's, this it's is fun. a really nice one, actually. So this is a Spitfire. It's on the back with the uh, with the little okay. like relief yep. of the Spitfire and the off. engraving on the case back there. And like we said, th this is this is the complete opposite end of the spectrum from you know the the yellow jacket and you know the other this paddock that we have on the table here. I mean, this is you know it's it's available on our site right now for sixty two fifty. So you know, super accessible, but it's a ton of watch for the money. You know, you ton have a watch. You know, very iconic. Yeah, a lot of people. I don't know about this one um, because IWC has been moving more and more towards in-house movements. A lot of these are 7750s. I think it is 7750. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's a 7750. <laughs> like like it's a peasant movement or something like that. But a 7750 is is a solid solid Agreed. movement. Yeah. And and, and for six, again, for for, you know, just over 6k. Like what what better piece are you going to find in that price point? How you get, where else are you going to get a chronograph, right. you know, of that quality for that price point? Like yeah. it's so much more watch. Yeah. Than, serviceable than, than the price indefinitely, yep. right? Like yep. easily serviceable, reliable. You can you can wear it and not stress about breaking the movement like a lot yeah. of good things. Yeah. I, I I absolutely love it. So, two quick things. Um, someone had asked about on the yellow jacket about the bracelet. We're, we're listing it, you know, with the bracelet as an optional add-on. Um, so that's, you know, the, the watch itself is going to be listed for one price, and then the bracelet is going to be available at an additional cost of X. So you'll see all that on our website probably in, like, the next week or two. And then somebody else asked us what we're drinking tonight. Robert already went through it, but Rob, please, once again, tell the people this what we've got. This is the organic rye whiskey from Cathedral Ledge Distillery. Put it under and the other one. What's that? Put it under this one. Over oh, Instagram, you're right. Uh, there you go. Oh, oh, there you go. And Cathedral Edge, we can be bought and sold. <laughs> <laughs> local, we Contact love supporting, us, yes. you know, local New England They're businesses. in North Conway, New Hampshire. I, I was there with my family and popped in and had a taste and bought the bottle. Nice. Highly recommend. It's tasty. Very nice. Um, where to next, Robert? Making me sweat. Uh, um, let's shoot for the odd duck okay. of the group. Nice. And go with one of the newer offerings from AP. And this, I think, was new this year, right? This because is this this variant is new this year, correct? This is the steel. Yep. With a beautiful Gillespie dial. And this. So we we've already talked a little bit in, in previous shows about the Code Eleven Fifty Nine and how we both think that it's a a fairly overlooked, um, underappreciated model that you know has slowly is coming into its own. Um, AP has really you know they they've listened to people's um, complaints and the different you know uh, notes that people have 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 given you know 
um, on the on the appearance of the watch. So when it first came out, you know, it had a very flat dial. It was just you know a single color with very little texture. Um, and AP has now moved on to you know the ombre dials. They now have this incredible guilloche dial. Um, this in you know a really cool green color. But you know it's again like it's very rare in the world of watches for a company to come out with a completely new model. Yes, and I, I can't imagine the years of development that right. it takes to make something like this. And I think the other thing AP did in the beginning was I think they shot themselves in the foot a little bit, by the way. They, they really hyped it up, and I can understand, like, they if did. you've been working on this for years and years and years, you're really excited to release it. But I think it was a little bit too much for what it is. I think they went kind of too far with that, and then when they dropped those original ones with the flat dials, yep. it people were just like, nope. Right. You know, and then, you know, the next year, they came out with the Fume dials in the gold cases, which, you know, in my opinion, were winners all around. I mean, could you imagine if they had launched the brand with with, with, that. Uh, with the Fume dials like and, the and, then, and then went the right into this Guilloche chronograph? Like, yeah. it would have and been an steel. instant hit. In, in steel. steel. Right, right. It's a great size. And, like, talking about calibers and things like this, the the caliber on this watch is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean it's, um, an, it's an in-house caliber. I'll try and show it one more time. I think it's like a seventy-hour power reserve, right around there. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, and again, this is a completely new caliber for for AP. Um, let me see if I find it. it's a uh, caliber forty-four oh one. So yeah, I mean, just fills the case. Yep. Which is one of those things a lot of people like to rag on when when the movement is too small for the watch, and I kind of agree with that. I think, yeah, like, I in that case, you know, close the case back or yeah, something. Exactly. Um, <laughs> because, you know, nobody wants to see all of the spacer. Right. Um, but, yeah, I I think these are fantastic. Agreed. I would wear one. I would wear one very proudly. Um, and I think, one. you know, you have to handle it. I've said it a bunch of times. You have to handle this watch. You can't yeah. look at photos and then form your opinion on that because... There's too many details that you're not going to see right. in the photos. I mean, just like, again, we've talked about this a million times, but, you know, that that double, what is it, double convex, convex yeah. uh, crystal, it's, you know, it's one of those things that it just doesn't... A photos... level of high school geometry that, that I did yeah, not achieve. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, photos don't pick it up, so when you actually look at it in person, I mean, like, even right now, as I catch in, you know, a... a an angle, you know, an, uh, whatever, a side view of it, you're getting all these crazy angles Multi and things from the crystal. Yeah, things. crazy and distortion. It's very cool. You have these, like, you know, the sculpted lugs and everything. It's it's a super cool piece. So it, it's definitely one that you need to see in person. I also think the more we've worked here, the more I've gotten to handle this stuff. I think it's really fascinating to see the brands that put a lot of effort into what I would call, like, the curb appeal. Mm-hmm. So making sure that the movement's really decorated and looks really yep. good or, like, making amazing dials or something like that. But what really pays dividends, I think, is when you focus on the movement. Or, sorry, not the, the movement. Case when you focus on the geometry of yeah, the case. 100%. And you create a case that, no matter the size, is comfortable. Right, because there, sits well. there are and so many pieces that both you and I have, have seen photos of or, you know, in new releases that we've seen and we've said, oh my God, I have to have that, or I can't wait yeah. to put that on. And then we get it, and all, it's very all, nice. all of those elements that we saw, you know, that we that we loved, whether it was decoration or movement or whatever it was, like they're still there, and we still like them and appreciate them. But you put it on your wrist, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. It's yeah. not designed well, so yeah. it's it's disappointing when that happens. And when you're talking about chronographs, a lot of these are in bigger cases, yes. right? The nature yeah. of these mechanisms and the complexity that some of them have, adding the big date complication on the longa. I've seen some really cool photos of longas with the dial off where you can actually see the size of the wheels that are mm -hmm. required for that big date. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, it's insane, right. actually. And you, you think about the size of the bits in the movement that have to move these giant wheels. Well, I was going to say, the amount of power that is required exactly. to actuate those wheels, it's it's not something that, you gener that, that we think of, but... Yeah. There's a reason why it was so difficult, and why no one was doing this before Longa right. put the effort in and, and developed, you know, this completely new in-house movement yeah. to do it. You know, it's not an easy thing. Yeah, so when you're talking about things like a bigger case, and I think this IWC is a great example, because mm -hmm. if you look, to go back to the IWC, if you look at this case, you would say, yeah, that's a pilot chrono. I'm going to take out this whiskey. Can you put that on your side? <laughs> yes, I, I, gladly, Robert. I, I'd hate to spill it. <laughs> 
Um, you'd look at this and you'd say, yeah, that's a case. It's got lugs. And, and that's it. And like, whatever, it's a case. But as a guy who wears, you know, generally 36 millimeter watches, mm -hmm. I can put this on. This is probably a 41 or something. And... Let me look and see oh, sorry, YouTube. Camera's freaking out. It's okay. Just Let keep me going. try this. Yep. And try that. Yeah, it's, a four, it's a 41 mil case. It's a 41. And I don't know. I mean, let me... Maybe I'm being vain, you, but that you, looks great. No, but let me... <laughs> If, if you do say it over yourself, <laughs> it looks it great. If I do say it over myself, that looks great. Well, let me, I let wear me, that. Let me see for a second, because honestly, I, I, thick, wear, but like, I wear even smaller pieces than you do. I mean, like, here. If I didn't have the tag, I'm under the cuff. No problem. Oh, wait. Okay? There you under go. the cuff. There you go. Under but let me, let me see, because I... Under the cuff. Under the cuff. Under the cuff. <laughs> Here's a couple YouTube questions. All right, Greg, hit us with I'm going to try this on while... Uh... So the first is from Geezer. It's kind of off topic, but... Okay. Have you ever done a deal with Anthony... Farrer, Farrer, you know the timepiece gentleman? No. no. No experience there. No. Um, he's the, the guy that. Yeah, we know who he is, but yeah. And I'm then the other that. one, Christopher Arig. Have you noticed Chrono's yeah, changing noticed. style over the years? Everything changes style yeah. over the years. Um, I mean, but, but to be. You know, if, if we're going to go back to this IWC, which, if I do say so myself, looks even great on my tiny wrist. Exactly. Well, that's, um, that's the thing. And so it's like you're looking at this very basic case. Yeah. Brushed finish. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's nothing remarkable about it. No. But then you put it on and you wear it. And if you were to wear that all day, even, again, as a guy coming from, like, super skinny 36 mil stuff that I wear. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. No, I love it. You it's can great. wear it all exactly. day. And it's comfortable. And it looks good. And, Yeah. I mean, going yeah. back, going back to Chris's question real quick. You know, there's only, I mean, whatever. We we can like wax poetic about all the little changes and whatnot that have happened over the years, but there's only so much, to be honest, that that watchmakers can really do. And you have a watch like like the you know the Pilot Chrono, which has been essentially the exact same with slight slight differences. Yes, I or, see. I see where you're or, going. Or <laughs> You know, the, the Speedmaster or, or this Daytona that for 60 years now, you know, has been essentially the same. And there's really, you know, it, when, a, when a company, you know, whether it's a watch company, a car company, whatever it might be, you know, when, when they hit on a design that, that resonates and that works and is successful, you know, why would they change it? Just just update it, you know, change the materials, change the, you know, some of the, 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 the technical details of, of the movements, you know, obviously progress there. But... Don't mess it up. I mean, we, we can all think of, you know, examples of products or probably even watches that mm -hmm. companies have, for just for the sake of doing something new, have changed and ruined. Who remembers you know? Crystal Pepsi? <laughs> I know you're out there. I know you remember. Everybody tries to do that. And there's some great, actually, there's some great, like, kind of studies in, like, you know, wrecking your business. Like, what was it? The Arch Deluxe from McDonald's and stuff like that, which is yeah, yeah, considered yeah. a huge debacle. They spent a ton of money of on course. that and lost it all. Right. Um, and Crystal Pepsi Crystal is Pepsi, another one. Like, Pepsi there's a ton of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I think, actually, that's the perfect segue into Omega and yeah. the venerable horological giant that is the Speedmaster. Sure. Yeah. Because Let's do it. Because we have a watch here so this that... George, George Brona asked for this one, so George, here you go, buddy. Oh, nice. A, a perfect choice, too. This yeah. fits in so beautifully with what we're doing today because we have here the, the new Ed White or the new 321, depending mm -hmm. upon, you know, which nickname you prefer. This is a 39-millimeter Speedmaster, right? 39 mil case. Nine and a half, I believe. With yeah. no crown guards. 39.7, actually. Oh. To, get, to get real specific. Very Robert. swift. <laughs> very precise of you. Um, this has no crown guards. This has flat lugs without the twisty, curvy business yep. on the Speedy Pros. It's got that this flat would be, bracelet. Yeah, yes. Which is the best. The, probably, yes. <laughs> I mean... Obviously, the movement is important, but for me, geez, that bracelet. That those new Speedy Pro bracelet's really good, too, though. It is, it Omega is. and the I bracelet agree. game are good. Well, but they were so bad for so long. Like, this was like a revelation <laughs> when this came out. They were bad. They were fine. Oh, they were so uncomfortable. They were fine. And so when this came out three years ago, this was like, you know, just perfect. Absolutely love it. But again, so like we were just saying, with, with, the, with the idea of development and everything, this is actually, Omega literally took an original 321 movement, which went out of production, I want to say, in 68 or 69, something yes, like that. Yes, because the Dash 67, I believe, was the last 321 applied logo. Then when you hit the Dash 68s, 145022 Dash okay, so this, so the, get... the, so the 321 goes out of production 55 years ago, give or take. 
Omega. I was going to say, that's good math if you're right. I have no idea if you 16, are. Yeah, because, 16 you know, to 2013, it's not that hard. Rye okay. whiskey. <laughs> Anyways, so, but, so in 2020, when Omega decides that they're, actually, it was a little before, I believe, because they did that limited, limited edition, but regardless, when they brought back the 321, they took an original 321 movement from the 60s, disassembled it, and they, com- they completely laser scanned every single component so that they could then go ahead and re- construct the movement with you know modern materials and everything but it's this is this is a 321 movement essentially from the 60s just produced now with today's materials and it's perfection like why would you change that this is like the singer porsche of omega ish yeah. Masters, yeah. right because it's like you're basically getting if you could travel back in time yeah. and buy a brand new ed white this is it with right. the with the difference of a display back on this which is really nice and they even did the display back um, is a hundred they did the copper it. finish on the movement right which to me was like good job boys that's the way it should be the movement's gorgeous look at that i mean why would you hide that you know yeah and and you know what honestly for me the best part about this is that omega decided to make it a regular production piece instead of doing the classic omega thing and saying we're gonna make you know Six thousand eight hundred and you know, or whatever, thirty two <laughs> three thousand two hundred and ten of them, or whatever. Yeah. They said no, we're gonna make this a regular production uh, piece that you know anybody can get, and it's just gonna be out there. And yeah, it's at a higher price point, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it, in my so. opinion. I think so. The other cool thing about Omega, and some people may disagree here, we've lost our camera and our production staff. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're still we're still streaming. We're good. We're good. Um, so the Omega's done a really interesting thing because they have their classic Speedmasters. They have yeah. the Speedy Pro. They have this one in there. They have um, the gold ones that are based off of the vintage designs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the uh, like the Apollo 11 and right. those pieces. But yeah. then they also do like the Dark Side of the Moon. Mm-hmm. They do the Coaxial Racing Speedmasters. Yep. They do those new... Um, David, this camera. Uh... What is it? There's another one that they did the, with the red and the green and the colors and stuff like that. So they do these other versions of the Speedmaster that in some ways, I think they they screwed it up by calling it a Speedmaster. I think Which it would one? almost do better. Any of these, like like the Dark Side of the Moon yeah. or the coaxial racing things, any of sure. those things because... Or this the that Speedmaster Moon with the automatic that's like real thick. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they would do better if they were calling those something different altogether because i think people look at that and they're like that's not a speedmaster but i think it's also a great alternative for the person who's like this is old i'm not old Mm -hmm. i don't want this watch Mm -hmm. i want a chronograph from omega because i like the history and the story but i want something new and it's it's kind of an interesting thing i go back and forth i mean omega could easily you know do a do a pretty heavy edit of their catalog and i wouldn't even know that a lot of this stuff was gone you know what i mean but uh, again, I, I agree. You could definitely split the lines and have some kind of like sub models within the Speedmaster, you know, family or whatever. Yeah. But honestly, right now, this is probably my favorite, you know, Speedmaster. You know, even I, I think I like it even more than a lot of the like we were just talking about the gold ones, the Apollo Eleven, the Moonshine. You know, all those pieces. I do that, really like the yellow gold Moonshine on the on the rubber bracelet. Uh, oh no, strap, I was going to say the Moonshine better. with the burgundy. Bezel, what is that? Is that's that the an Apollo, Apollo 11? 11? That's the 50th yeah, anniversary of that, Apollo 11. The Nixon watch, yeah. that is so cool. So anyways, I love that. So and that's got a great bracelet. Yeah, well, because again, it's bracelet. that it's the new vintage style right. Omega Speedmaster bracelet. So they just went back to the old stuff. So anyways, this one is this one's incoming on our website right now. Um, we're asking 19.9 for this full set, obviously. So incredible piece. If you're interested, it's number 49994. Um, so check it out on our website. Yeah, really good Speedmaster. Um, Craig, quick check-in. Any any other questions over there that we should hit before well, we move on? Christopher Arig asked to see 49241, which is that Breguet I okay. handed you. Cool, so. cool. Here you go, Robert. Give this, uh, let me just get the plastic off it, and then Mick Gruber. show Next. that guy off to Chris. Here, I'm not even going to mess with Creamy that. Creamy Loons. That's a good screen name. Creamy Looms? Creamy Looms. Creamy Looms. Yikes. Creamy Looms. <laughs> Sounds like a, uh, Careful. like a electronic music, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Like a rave DJ. So, Breguet. Breguet, limited edition type 20. Is it, so was this the, which, 
Does this have a specific name, this model? This isn't the... Um, it's an Aaron Aval, but I don't remember no, what the... No, I'm looking it the... up, because I don't remember what the specific anniversary yeah. was. There was oh, something on it's this. the 100th anniversary. And this, so. this comes from the... Um, it's almost there. This comes from, I believe, the second generation of these Type 20s. A bunch of years ago, I did kind of a deep dive into like the historical Type 20s and where they come from and everything. And there's a couple different evolutions, just like the Speedmaster. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe this one with the rotating bezel is like the second or the third iteration of that Type 20, kind of after the original like Dirty Dozen yep. era watches mm -hmm. and all that. Um, but again, another chronograph with great history. Um, Talking to the watchmaker, he was telling me that these old, these Type 20s are still using the same movement architecture that they used back for the original models. Um, Seriously? And similar to the Speedmaster, where they're making it with modern materials and things like that, but it's still, by and large, the same caliber really? that was in those original ones. Huh. Yeah. I think, obviously, there's a Type 21 and Type 22 that add different features sure. and a higher beat rate and things, but a lot of them still hold on to that original historical significance. I mean, another totally overlooked, you know, undervalued, underappreciated oh, model. Oh, man, the in my, standard I mean, Type 20s? Reggae, reggae as a whole, but it's specifically the Type 20. Like, yeah. it's just, it's ridiculous. It's almost, you know, criminal how, how little yeah. attention these get and how good they are, how and nice they wear. It's a real good, like, if you're looking at Speedmasters and maybe you're looking at... Uh, what else would be on that price point? I guess, like, a so Navigator this is, Chrono this is or something. Yeah, I mean, if this is... So, you know, the new, I really actually, I, I fully appreciate the new Breitling stuff, but I, I would go the Breguet route, you know, 10 out of 10 times, and, you know, it's it's just, it's the quality is so much better, and it's just more interesting. It's a lot more interesting. I love the big eye, too. So these, mm, if yeah. you look at these, the minute register, I'm going to try and hold still. The <laughs> minute register is bigger than the sub-seconds and the hour counter down at the bottom there. And they call that a big eye chrono. Um, and it's just one of those kind of holdovers from back in the day where I guess that was your most important register, mm -hmm. right? You didn't really need yeah. to know how many hours had elapsed, but you're curious as to how many minutes yep. had You'll passed. You'll see that, you know, famously you on, on great on, size case. On those vintage um, uh, Universal Genevs, you know, those those big eye chronos. Yeah. You'll see that on some. I love how they one. do the coin edge on these. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel too dressy or over the top. But it's like just such a nice detail that ties it into the the say, more uh, dressy watches that right, Breguet does. Right, the classique and whatnot. It's it's yeah. it is really nice that they were that they found a way to to really you know for a company that's known for dressier you know fine um, you know higher end complication you know higher end pieces you know to to make this one still feel special and to yeah. really tie it into like you're saying you know the rest of the you know the heritage of the brand. So really really cool piece. The next Again, watch. Goes both What's that? Ways. The next watch. Next, the next watch, a oh, Breguet, a, Breguet, a plastic Type 20. That's that's the next. That's not a bad call, Watch Greg. brand that hasn't been used, and the one that has the most history. I would say the piece that has. The it's funny because so we've actually joked about that. You know, after you know the Moon Swatch <laughs> and and the Blanc Pond Scuba, like you know after those were so ridiculously successful, and they've you know they've brought so much attention to, you know specifically Blanc Pond that doesn't necessarily get the attention um, that. That's the last time I saw a blow pan ad. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, you know, we, we, we were joking, like, what are they going to do, uh, you know, a, a Swatch Classic or something? But I didn't even think about the Type 20. Like, that might well, actually hey, make nobody sense. nobody does. I know. Nobody we suspects the Type 20. No one's. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the Kaiser Sose of watches. Um, cool. Good call. I like this. That is a good That is a good shout, actually, um, in terms of something we, we didn't think of in the, the world of Kronos. Uh, so... I think we saved this for the end. Yeah, so. that's a good one. Let's go. Um, let's go Vacheron and then Daytona, and then we'll Vacheron. go over here. Those are most logical in terms of comparison yep. too, because they they are similar. So, third generation. Yep. Overseas. Chrono fifty five hundred V. Pulling details now. This is obviously the Panda. So you have that classic black dial with the white sub dials. Which looks really good. And these black dials on this, I don't know if they're lacquer, but they have that beautiful inky blue, or inky black finish on them. The blue dials are very much the same. Yeah. And I know the blue dials are a baked, this baked is not. lacquer dial. This is not, but I don't know I don't know how they still got that. It doesn't have a metallic finish. sheen, though. Mm -hmm. It's really wild. It's and it's the same if you were to buy the black 
uh, time only, the black 4500, that yep. has the same dial. I actually think, for me, I would go this way over same. the blue. Especially if I was doing the chrono, because the black with the white subs, whether it's a Daytona, <laughs> Le Mans, or whether it's a, uh, a Vacheron like this, or even like an old school Navitimer. What's up, guys? What's Sorry. up, gents? I'm seeing the images flip when you use the, the pictures in the front facing camera. Front facing camera. It looks okay here. It's okay. We got it. Yeah, it's all good. We're good. Keep going, Rob. Yeah. Um, so I would I would go for this uh, this layout, kind of no matter what chronograph I go. I think you're right, I think honestly. It's really, I mean, really, really I, I I think I like the black. You know, this this classic panda. I like. I definitely like this more in in chrono form um, over the blue chrono. You know, if 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 I'm going time only, I'm I'm gonna go with the blue just because I I really like that dial. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's got that. The dial is just gorgeous, you know. It, it 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 almost like sucks you in, you know. It's 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 a really really interesting look. And does this have the Rob? The third generation has the quick release bracelet, correct? Yeah. So show how easy that is. So for years, you know, different different brands were trying to, you know, like especially IWC, we're trying to do like you know a, a quick button. release a I'm quick release bracelet there. that, you know, it just didn't hold up. Where you know you'd have straps falling off, and yep. it just was just not a very well executed design and Vacheron for whatever reason has like nailed this it's so the this... other one is the micro adjust oh yeah Bink. I didn't think about that yeah five mil it's so like, easy you, you've got both sides too where you can just push pull right here by the clasp and oh yep. sweaty arm extension <laughs> but I mean that's, salty lunch extension that's such a big complaint for people on like the old school, the fifteen two hundred two, mm -hmm. the Panic fifty seven eleven, which really aren't that old, but I mean even but, even older, you know, pre Glidelock Rolex. You know what I mean? Not, yeah, but you have the holes on the side of the clasp. You needed a tool. Yeah, but you needed you, couldn't, you, you needed couldn't, a tool. Yeah. Exactly. This is so easy where you don't need anything. You just you know give it a quick pull and it's there. And you know this <laughs> easy. You, know. you can get you know you <laughs> when you buy buy this you know it comes with the bracelet you can get it with a um, an alligator strap and you can get it with a rubber strap and it's just it's so easy to swap between them that like you know and even the deep boy actually is tool them. free right it's, even the deep and, and and it's secure it doesn't just fall apart like the old ones used mm -hmm. to so you know really just a great a, a well-designed case because this is this is big yeah, and it, it feels big on me but looking at it in the monitor mm -hmm. it's like I could get away with it's it. It's too big for me, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, you, you could totally get away with that. You that know makes, what it is? It's sense. the... The, um... The bezel area, like, this part of it is, is a beautiful size. That's fine. But then, because of the nature of these cases, and it's just like an AP Royal Oak case, because of the extra kind of meat you have from where this tapers down into mm -hmm. the bracelet and stuff, that's where it starts to feel a little bit bigger on the wrist. Because here... This side to side is fine. Yeah. And this would suit, you know, most people. And, again, looking at it on the monitor, it doesn't look bad. It looks great. It's so weird. Perception I mean, is, is a funny thing. This is man. really probably my favorite generation of the of the overseas, and especially the overseas chrono, and kind of going back, again, back to what Chris was saying. You know, this is still totally true to the original design aesthetic of, you know, back to the 222, essentially, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and right up for going on 50 years now. Um, you know, on on the on the design of you know Vacheron sport watches, you know, with that Maltese cross, um, you know, just with that kind of you know blocky case, it's just it it you know. And they, this they is in house it. now, right? This is in house now. Yeah, this, this has so it's a column wheel chrono caliber fifty two hundred um, fifty four hour power reserve. So you know, and you know, for those of you that don't know, you know, a column wheel is just a more accurate um, uh, setup for a chronograph. Or, you know, it uses um, you know, a, a wheel instead of a cam, essentially. And it's just, you know, it's, it's right. just more, more the other accurate ones are like and, lever and smoother, actuated. correct, and smoother yeah. actuation, basically. So, um, yeah, really, really great piece. Do we want to go direct? Ah, it's What's showing on? the mirror image. I see that now, uh, Mr. Prone pointing that out. That, uh, I don't think we can do anything with it today, but maybe we can try next week to set that up differently. It's too big for me, says watch clog. <laughs> does the, does that mean that like your your watch is clogged? Like you got significant you wear contamination watches in there? and clogs. Or you wear watches and clogs. <laughs> That's cool. Hey I'm, Duty Boston says we are very knowledgeable and we're dressed extremely appropriately. I wanna say hey, David Siegel, 
jacket for you, my friend, this week. <laughs> I heard you had some complaints about shirt sleeve Justin over here. We listen. <laughs> we listen. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't we go into the Daytona, and then we'll kind of wrap up with a few, you know, other crazy pieces here. Oh, wow. It's 540 already. Yeah. We are, uh, we're blowing right through this as usual. So... You know, it, again, kind of the logical progression here, going from the Speedmaster to the Overseas, now to the Daytona. So, you know, another iconic chrono. And honestly, when you, for me, when you say chronograph, this is this is the the watch that I think of. I think it's the watch that most people think of. I find it really funny that I did not think of it. What did you? What did you I, go to? So I actually, that's right. That's right. Because right? yeah, yeah, yeah. we started. So when we do this, you know, we we set out in the morning and we say, okay, what are we going to talk about? And we said, okay, we're going to talk about Chronos. And it was like, all right, let's look through what we have and start Put figuring together. out what watches we're going to pull. So yeah. I start our little document, our Google Doc, and and I put a paddock on there, and I put the data graph on there. And I put, uh, put I put the code. No, I mean, a bunch you of weird bunch stuff. Of weird I put this stuff tray on there. You did not. <laughs> Get out of here. I put the IWC Pilot Chrono. Once again, other people I, take credit for my work. <laughs> <laughs> I did not put a Daytona on the switch. I did not put a Daytona on the list. And I looked at Rob's list and I said, "What are you doing, my friend? You got to have a Daytona yeah, on there." And and it wasn't it wasn't like any kind of slight. It wasn't no. that I, you know, I just, it There's didn't so come to my now. mind. And I think Daytona is is such a ubiquitous watch. I don't know. It's like almost in a class of its own. I like, but I mean, you I know, I, oh, no, I agree. I, it, it is almost in a, in a, you know, it's entirely its own class. You know, in this one, you know, instead of just going with a standard, you know, steel ceramic or, you know, mm -hmm. um, something like that, you know, we grab this this white gold. So this is the 116519LN, you know, white gold case, silver dial, uh, black ceramic bezel and on the the black oyster flex and you know the the addition of the the oyster flex straps is probably one of my favorite additions you know honestly a, probably of, of any rolex you know kind of uh new uh feature or whatever in the past i don't even know how long if now. you guys haven't checked out what goes into these oyster flexes you should actually go to rolex's website and look at it because the the technology of this clasp and the come now, there we go. Uh, the technology of this strap and like the fact that there's a piece of titanium, yeah, in, titanium blade in, in there. this strap that helps keep the shape and it's like it's it's really it's it's not your grandfather's rubber strap. Well, and it's it's like supremely comfortable. It's got that ridge on the inside that keeps it up. It's snug, but it keeps it up it off breathes, of your wrist. So you which get is good, because when do you want to wear a exactly, rubber strap? In the out. summer, right. right? And like when you're, you might get it wet or something like that. And this allows it to breathe, so it's not like, it doesn't feel like it's like stuck to your wrist. Um, but, you know, I mean, so again, for, you know, a, a watch that's been in production, you know, technically for 70 plus years, you know, the first, you know, pre-Daytona was, I think, 1950. And then, you know, the Daytona name actually came in with the 6239 in the early 60s. But, you know, a watch that's been in production... Well, Rolex for, was making chronos. They were making, like, stuff in the 40s, right? right? Like you, but the, old, the like, real pre-Daytona, I think, was yeah. like the 6234 yeah. in 1950. So when, when the, you know, when the model really that. kind yeah. of, you know, uh, the birth of the, of, the, of the model line. You know, again, for a watch that's going on 75 years old, you know, it's... You can take that 6234 from 1950 or, you know... Even an even better comparison, you know, you can take that six two three nine from nineteen sixty three and put it next to this this piece, you know, for, that is current production, and it like it's very obvious, you know, it, it's it's it makes sense. It doesn't feel like it's you know some totally crazy you know development. You know, it's it's very clear with you know the heritage of the piece, you know, of the brand, and you know, it's just Rolex well, has remained really true to the original design. I've made this analogy before, but it's like it's like the Porsche nine eleven. How many times? No matter what how many era, times can we make this? No matter what this era you see it from, but it's true. What else no, do you want right, to compare right. it to? You're I right. mean, I could talk guitars, but then I'm just going to board it. <laughs> so it's like there, there are certain iconoclasts yeah. where it's like you've you've set this precedent mm -hmm. of like this is what a Daytona is, mm -hmm. and then the fact that they can keep that running and still keep that relevant and still keep that feeling modern and mm -hmm. feeling, you know, it's, it's amazing to me. It's, well, it's amazing even, again, to me. Again, like, you know, so, you know, the, the, the new releases this year in the Daytona line with the, essentially, the only, you know, real cosmetic difference is that, that ring around the bezel, yeah. 
But it does. It looks so different. But it's again, it's 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 harkening back to those original designs with the you know the steel bezels, mm -hmm. and like pulling it all together. I don't know how Rolex does it. Honestly, they're 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 kind of the masters of that. Thumasket. I see. Thumb I see this. I like ask it. Est. Thumb, thumb ask est. Thumb ask est. Tom ask est. In in your opinion, what's the best rubber OEM strap out of out there? OEM meaning original equipment manufacturer. Oh, Robert, with the terminology, mm. watch out. Um, great question. I I think it's I think it's the Oysterflex. Yes. There's really. Sorry. I mean, so. Producer Craig just brought this out a moment ago as well. This is a 5968 paddock. You know, this is the rose gold, so it's the Aquanaut Chrono. And this is on, you know, the classic Aquanaut Tropic rubber strap, um, which, you know, it's it's good. And I It looks great. It looks great. But it's a flat piece of rubber. It's a flat piece this, of rubber. This is the tremendously amazing gold watch on a piece of rubber. You know, and... Dial, I think know. the you know the other kind of contender. Rob just hit that on your on the phone there. The low battery. It's okay. We're we got we'll enough time. Yeah. You know the other one of the other contenders now. You know Omega finally developed you know a rubber strap for the Speedmaster that is pretty good. It's not. It's still not as good as the Oyster Flex. It's just it. That's a high bar. I don't is. know. Can I give one? That sure. Is, what do you got? The Doxa Sub Three Hundred has mm -hmm. an amazing rubber strap. Okay. It's All right. A, no, it's it's really nice. We'll we'll take your we'll take your word for that, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about rubber strap, not the watch. No, I know. Um, I mean, <laughs> oh wow. So we're buying the Dang. watch for the strap now. Dang. Is that where we're at? Um, I mean, I can't even think of any others, honestly. You know, Oysterflex, Paddock. Paddock. I mean, you've got you've got Vacheron. You get a rubber strap with this. It's not. It's not good. You can get rubber straps on IWCs also like the Aqua good. Timers and stuff. Those I mean, are those I, are the, the IWC ones ones? specifically are so rigid. They're they're. It's not. Again, back to the Oyster Flex, it has that titanium blade in it, so it maintains its shape, but at the same time, somehow, I don't know by what kind of Swiss, you know, wizardry, it's, like, the, the rubber that they use is super supple, and it, yep. it oh, it's molds sorcery. to your wrist and it's feels sorcery. really nice. It's black magic. It, for real. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I'll tell you the worst okay. rubber strap, although like it. it might be silicon. I'm not sure. Which one? But if you go back about 20 years to Blancpain, and the strap that originally came on the Aqualung. Oh gosh, that, but that was a, that was a combination. Well, that was that was the worst part of that was was <laughs> that super thick uh, shoulder where the where thick it meets shoulder. The, case. the fact that you can't put a spring bar in it, you have to use the pin and tube. Which anybody who's tried to change those has bent many a pin pusher, many that's, a pin. That's a nightmare. Um, and the strap gets like the boobons because it like where it bends here. It like gets these bubbles yeah. and these like like it it legit looks like it has a communicable I mean, disease. I mean, there were multiple times where we would order them for a replacement strap, a brand new one from Blancpain for a client. We would put the strap on the watch, and before they even took delivery, it would already be bubbling. It was oh, like one it, of our. Was, I remember one feature, of our photographers coming over to me, and because he had taken the watch and he had gone like this to take a photo of it, and the strap just. <laughs> <laughs> like, it folded in half and broke, and he came over and he's like, I just broke this, and it was a brand new strap. And that's why they don't make it anymore. Right, exactly. They now do a sailcloth yep. uh, replacement for that strap that is much, much better. Yeah, sail so, I mean, it's very similar to this AP, where instead of having this calfskin, it's more of a rubber backing on the sailcloth. It's that Kevlar sail. Honorable chronograph mention Okay. that neither of us thought about, okay, okay, 2185. Okay. Blanc Pan 2185. That's Most of you may not know that one, but you should take a look. Um, when was the last time? We it's been a minute. had one recently. Yes. Um, yes. It's a white. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The white's not as good. You gotta get the black with so the military the only, dial. The only, the only problem, so I mean, I... You owned one. Do I want to tell the story? <laughs> you, owned, you owned a titanium one for like four and a half minutes. But like it, you barely start, stop, and reset the chrono, and you had already drank. I had it. <laughs> no, no, that is not what happened at all. So I had a really, I had a titanium one that I absolutely, you know, I love the design of because it's titanium case. It was a grayish black dial with a little you bit know, of red on there, red and, stuff, and some yeah. kind of like creamy loom on there. It's super cool looking piece, and I got it. I wore it, and I literally like started the chronograph once, and it was broken. So or it broke. And then I sent it for service. It was service. I got it back, and I pushed the chrono again, and it broke again. It's just like, you know, 
I love the look, and I I fully appreciate it. But for whatever reason, Blanc Bon from that arrow is 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 very delicate. It is well. It is it, a I very wasn't at the time. I wasn't chronograph. careful enough, you know, or yeah. I wasn't the right person, or I wasn't at the right point in my life to have that watch and and be able to fully enjoy it. So, right. Well, it's yeah, a, it's a very outside. it's a very fine watch. It is right. It really and a lot is. of Blanc Bons are like that. A lot of Blanc Bons are ultra thin, and they're very very fine, and the parts are very fine, mm-hmm. and. Either the smallest bit of contamination. Those are the worst watches to drop. Please don't drop one oh if you own one because it's not going to work. Um, but they are. They're they're delicate little flowers compared really to are. like the, you know, the tank on oh a strap God. that is a Rolex. Yeah. yeah. You could wear that for Different years and years and years and never have to even yeah. think about servicing it. Different watch. All right. Before Ten gets, minute warning. I was going to say, let's go, go, to, go to the, yeah, yeah, sound the alarm. So let's it is go time. to the final... This is a lovely paddock, by the way. We didn't really talk about the fifty nine sixty eight, yeah. but you know what? Honestly, though, so I this this is beautiful. This rose gold brown dial, which I believe is new for this year, but in out of all of these, you know, they make uh, white gold with the blue dial. They make white gold with the green dial. I really like the original fifty nine sixty eight A. So the steel steel, it comes on a black or, orange, or an orange numerals. rubber strap. It's a black dial right. with white, um, you know, numerals and and. Um, I, I believe the the second hand is orange, some orange accents. You can keep it's, your high visibility vest, then, right? <laughs> I think I'll it's, take this. No, yes, way better. The, nobody does this rose gold brown better than Paddock. I agree. Whether I it's agree. this or sixty seven, sixty four, or fifty seven yeah. eleven rose yep. on the bracelet Agreed. is like fifty seven twelve rose hot on the damn. bracelet. Mm. So good. I take the eleven. No, why do you have to be so difficult? I'm not being <laughs> difficult. <laughs> All right. Close it out. This is all you. This all right. is your favorite piece. This is of my all favorite time. chronograph. Gotta keep your datagraphs. It. Keep your daytonas. This is the first one that I put on the list. When when we said let's do chronographs. I should say when producer Craig said let's do chronographs. And we said, <laughs> all right, cool. Now yeah, we don't have sure. to think about it anymore. <laughs> um, this was the first one that I put on the list. Okay. And and this is this is the gun to our knife fight here. I mean, I do want to say that you 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 didn't really follow the brief on this one. <laughs> we said, let's do chronographs, and you're like, cool, let me go with a deep six-figure Paddock Grand Comp split chronograph, but continue. But you, you just said chronograph. I did. So I what's did. the problem? All right, keep talking. Here's a chronograph. Keep if you If you disagree with me, hit me in the comments. Go ahead. You can at me. I'll, I'll, I'll just hit him for real. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't. I'm holding him in sense of watch. <laughs> so this is the Paddock 5370 in platinum. Mm. This is a split second chronograph. <laughs> David, <geez. laughs> that is now out of production. They are now making a blue dial version, which is um, not as good. A split seconds, which we might have covered previously in the past. I'm going to wind it up quickly. Uh, includes an extra button in the crown, which is why you buy this watch because that <laughs> looks fantastic. Uh, but the extra button is to split the seconds hands. So if I start this. There we go. Um, if I start this, you'll notice both second hands moving together. I don't know if these cameras are fine enough for this. Yeah, but, and then when I split them, it pauses one of the second hands that would give you time to record the timing, the precise timing of whatever lap you just completed, and then you rejoin them and you continue going. And I think we were talking about this because we were talking about like the longa double or triple split mm-hmm. where it starts to also split the minutes and the hours, yep. which is wild. So more bits in the movement. This has a very, very complicated movement. Now, not only are we pausing a gear train, you know, we have a gear train that we're starting and stopping for the chronograph, but then yeah, within that gear one. train, we have another, right. and a lot of these have two column wheels. I think some of the longas have even more than that because of like that, that triple split problem. Yeah. It has like three or four column wheels in there. It's ridiculous. But a, a feat of watchmaking, an absolutely stunning platinum case, all kinds of beautiful but details. But even, even more importantly, show off that enamel, that enamel dial, a which is just ridiculous. A black enamel dial with breguet numerals, hands with a, just enough loom that you're not actually going to see it at night, so don't expect it to work. But it makes the legibility of the watch like 10x compared to like the 5170 black dial white gold, which just has the white gold hands, which they disappear. I mean, this so. is just an absolute boss watch. Like, it's, you know, it, it appears fairly simple, you know, yeah. for, you know, throw it, yeah, throw it on your wrist, slip this, it under the cuff, like, it's, it's from across the room or even up close, like, most people aren't going to even have no, any idea what that no is. No idea what it can this do, is what its capabilities are. Wrist. People are going to say, why does it say email on the dial, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. The but, Wi-Fi reception is fabulous. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> 
The and and this is one of those watches that for whatever ridiculous reason is under retail at the moment, mm. which to I me mean, is no, it's it's right around retail, but it is still below, which is ridiculous because you need a relationship with Paddock in order to you know be able yeah, to this purchase. Is, the as piece. far as I know, this is an application piece. It's it, you know incredibly limited production. You get the big folder. Yep, yep. You get the whole big folio, the giant box. You know, you get the whole. Look at that. The whole, Some people know, are production. like, it's too big to you. No. I say, push off. <laughs> I mean, I prefer smaller, more vintage yes. sized things, but that, yes. I mean, come on. You can't do any better than that. It, it is it is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I would say the, just great the tactile sound. feel, the wind, yeah. the feel. The, the little baby diamond at 6 o'clock to remind <laughs> you that you're a boss enough to have a platinum watch. Yep. It's coming in now. I don't know. Can you see There it is. There it is. There you go. Yeah. There's, there's a little, little baby. sparkle Boop. there. <laughs> yeah. Special piece. It really is. Really, yeah. Next level. Um, and and this, along with those Closinet World Times, I'm like, wake up, people. This well, stuff Closinet is World Time, so I think, good. we're getting totally off topic here, but Closinet World Time is so undervalued for... For the amount, you know, it's funny because, like, so the Closinet World Time speaks to what I care about in watches, and this piece, the split-second chrono, almost speaks more to what you care about in watches, where, you know, the the World Time, it's... Go on. I am intrigued here. So, I feel, I, I've said it a million times, I'm shallow, and I just like pretty things, so the, the I know, thank you. The ena the Enamel World Time is just such a gorgeous watch, and it takes so much... You know, uh, te artistry. technical know-how and artistry, yeah. you know, whereas this is a pure engineering marvel. I agree, you know, the dial is beautiful, the enamel and everything, but the, the enamel world times, there's there's a handful of people that are qualified yeah. to to create those dials, and it's it's such a story, you know? There's mm -hmm. there's there's this, you know, there's one little old man in Switzerland who knows how to paint the dial, and it came out on this day, it's, you know... More, you know, the color was mixed this way. I don't know. Yeah. There's just the so much more variation and everything. So super, super cool piece. I absolutely love it. Um, you're right. And they're both undervalued. They're I, both I tragic agree. on um, the current market. To mass, to, to, Tom, whatever your name is, Tom, I can't pronounce <laughs> it. You said, what about the Vacheron Cornivash? Totally agree. That's yes. a super cool piece that as well. That steel one. The steel one is the way to go. That is awesome. Um, whenever we get them in... First of all, they're always gone immediately because mm -hmm. they're just, you know, they're very desirable. But and that's that old school Lamania caliber. Exactly. So that's that is like, not in-house. That's But you know what, though? That movement, I think, has this place within the watch world where that's okay. For whatever reason, if you're, if you're using, like, a 7750 or something, yeah. people are like, ah, oh, you're lazy, <laughs> who cares? But if you make a watch and you put that Lamania caliber in it, everybody's yeah. like, oh, okay, well, I can get behind I that. I mean, it's like the 5070, you know, with that Lamania movement. It's got so much cachet. But anyways, back to Corn of Ash, you know, again, just, like, so gorgeous. The movement is incredible. You know, the lugs, it's all about the lugs on that piece. The, the cow horn lugs, you know, this just, it's, the design is incredible. I, yeah. I, that's, that's a great pick. Really, really yeah, nice. that's a good nice one. Piece. Nice dial, too, on the steel one, because it's not the, the platinum has a very kind of flat mm -hmm. monochromatic dial, and the steel has more kind of depth and yeah. texture to it that yeah. I think is really Really good. incredible. Yeah. I mean, if we missed anything, guys, let us know. I mean, throw, you know, throw some comments in, in, you know, when we post this, let we us know. Miss things. No. What? <laughs> no, not in the comments now, in the live, when this goes up afterwards. Throw, throw, throw some comments in there. Let us know what your favorite chronographs are, what we missed, you know, what we should be paying more attention mm. to, you know, if we're idiots, if we're brilliant, whatever you think. Um, there's so much variety. And again, like we went all the way from $6,000 to $230,000, you know, and there's and everything in between. There's, there's so much. Actually, many... we went more. Oh, true. We did Cause, actually. Because that, uh, that, that yellow, yellow jacket, jacket is going to be. Yeah. Maybe, probably a little bit higher than that. Anyways, yeah. we went from low to high, we'll say. <laughs> um, and everything in between. There's just, there's so m so many options. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, each of these pieces, really, a lot of these pieces have tons of history. It's mm -hmm. not like we picked anything that was, you know, beyond the code that was really a new model. These are all established, you know, historic designs that have been with us for, you know, three, three four, five, six, seven decades. So, you know, tons, tons of options, lots of great stuff. Um, this was fun. We're going to have to do yeah, a lot more of Yeah, this was good. I like this. I like so, so, also, if you have ideas for next week that you'd like to see, like, be it 
World Times, sure. or maybe it'd have to be Dual Time watches, because I don't think there's enough brands that mm, do World like times World tough. Times to Specific, do it, but we yeah. could do like Dual Times, GMTs, yep. we could do um, dress watches, yep. all kinds of things. So if you have ideas, maybe things we haven't thought of, we are definitely interested in hearing do about those. Do our job those. for us. Yes, please. More <laughs> of that. Um, thanks you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe on both our Instagram and our YouTube accounts. And if you have any questions on any of the watches you saw here, you can always give us a call here at the store. You can email sales at europeanwatch.com, and we'll be happy to help you with that. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Cheers. Cheers.